Hello, Paul in Perth here again. And whilst I usually do videos centering on the BL Master 3, and in fact, I am indeed currently sitting in a BL Master 3, this video is for anyone that drives a car with an automatic transmission. Does not matter the make or model, this is the same anywhere in the world for automatic transmissions. Now, there's a common situation that arises that causes a problem, but there is a solution. The problem is the car's battery's flat. And what you're trying to do is you want to move the car. You want to roll it somewhere. But what you find is even when you put the key in the ignition, put it into the on position, remembering the battery's flat so none of the instruments come on, you put your foot on the brake, you still can't get your transmission out of park. Can you see how that's stuck in park? And because of that, the flat battery means this car is immobile. It cannot move. Now, this is such a common situation that every car manufacturer in the world gives you an override for the situation. It's called the park lock override. Somewhere on your automatic transmission housing, there's going to be a little hole or a little tab that you can remove. So here on the BL Master 3, you'll see there's this little tab just here. And if I remove that little tab, you'll find underneath it, there's a hole. Now, if I stick a screwdriver into that hole and press down, what you'll find is now when I put my foot on the brake, I actually can get out of park, which means I could put the car into neutral and I could then roll the car. Now, every single car, doesn't matter the make or model, will have something in their arrangement here that allows you to do this. It's often a little hidden panel like that one. It's sometimes a hole. Even some of them will actually have a little piece of writing on it that will say park lock override with an arrow to the hole. Now I want to show you what I've actually done by putting that screwdriver down there so that you genuinely understand what I've what, what's happened there. So I'm going to disassemble this car partially just to show you what's happened. Okay, so to move that I actually need to activate that, so I'll get it out, get that off, okay, what I actually achieved by pushing the screwdriver in was I moved that lever, now if the battery was not flat, when I turn the ignition on and put my foot on the brake, a little solenoid would make that go across. But because the battery's flat, the solenoid isn't doing that. There's just no electricity to make it happen. And by pushing the screwdriver down, I am unlocking the gateway. So just to show you, that is locking the gateway. If I move that, the gateway is unlocked, okay? All right. So what you've achieved is you've moved a little mechanical lock off to the side, and that's allowing you to move that down. So. Assuming automatic cars are 50% of the world's population, this is a trick that you need to know for 50% of the cars you'll ever drive in. And what I'd say to you is, sometimes people say to me, what tools should I have in my car? I'm not very mechanical. What I would say to you is, please at least have a small Phillips and a small flathead um, in your car, and if you really want to be at it, get a medium flathead, a medium screwdriver, and a 10 millimeter socket, because you always need a 10 millimeter socket. And this will get you out of that um, situation. So you'll be able to move your car. Um, if you've ever had your car towed, and you've found your center console mucked with, the tow truck driver has done it, because this is a trick that tow truck drivers have to do several times a day, every day, because um, without doing it, the front wheels are locked up. So up until now, we've been talking about the shift lock override with the battery disconnected. I want to show you how this works with the battery connected so you can actually see the solenoid um, operating. So what I'm going to do, I'm taking the key, I'm putting it in the ignition, putting the ignition into the on position, and I'm going to press my foot on the brake. And when I push my foot on the brake, you can see that the shift lock override is um, unlocking. So when it's in the locked position, I can't get the select router park. But with the override um, activated, I can get the selector router out of park. So that's the job of, of the solenoid that's operating that switch. Now, I've had 
this is actually the second time I've filmed this video. I had a subscriber write to me and say, hey, I've got a faulty solenoid, or at least I can't get my car out of park even when I've got the battery connected. I think my solenoid has failed. So two things there. It can be the solenoid or it can be the brake switch. Now with the brake switch, it's really easy to remove. You just tilt, you just turn it from six o'clock position to 7.30 and you pull it out. It's positioned behind the brake pedal. And to put the new one in, you put it in at 7.30, turn it around to six o'clock and it locks. Okay, and it's behind the brake pedal. I've got another video that talks about that and I'll link to it in the description. So if, you, if your park lock solenoid isn't operating, it could be the fact that the car isn't detecting that you're putting your foot on the brake, number one or it can be the solenoid itself. Now this person was asking me, how easy or hard is it to change the solenoid in this structure? So I thought I'd answer that question. So what I did was, as you can see, I've, I've taken the four mounting bolts off the selector and I've turned it upside down. Now that is the solenoid there. So if you'll see that there, that when I put my foot on the brake, you can see that's the solenoid activating there. So if the solenoid failed, it's that part. Now the question becomes, how easy or hard is it to change that part? And the answer I've come to is, it's damn near impossible to do it as a component level thing, because this isn't plugged in. If you, if you zoom right in, you'll see it's not plugged in. Those wires are actually soldered in. Okay, and if I just turn this back over, I then thought, how would I get to it, or how would I uh, disconnect it from the whole assembly? So there was there's two um, bolts here, and if I just remove this one, I've, I've already removed the other one there. They were eight mil, by the way. If you want to get them out, if I just move this one. What do you find? Right, so there we are. That's that little eight mil bolt out. Now you can actually, if I put the selector down here, get this top panel to come out. But what you find is, it's a dog's breakfast in there to try and work on because you've got all of this wiring and the wiring is all going into various places. And if you look, look down there, the solenoid is, is right down the bottom and you quickly come to the conclusion that you would much rather be changing that whole unit rather than trying to get down to the solenoid and desolder it, get another one, resolder it and put it back in. So the amount of money you save on parts, you're easily going to lose on labor. And what I did was I looked on the Mazda um, website and I found this diagram here. And with this diagram here, you can see that they sell the shift select solenoid as a single non-serviceable part. So in other words, Mazda will only sell you the whole thing. They won't sell you just the solenoid. So if you needed, if you ever needed any other proof that don't, don't go trying to repair just the solenoid, that's it from Mazda. They don't even sell it as a single unit, okay? So my advice to you if your shift lock solenoid isn't working, is firstly, try the cheap and easy thing, which is your um, brake switch. You'll be able to tell if your brake switch isn't working, by the way, if your brake lights don't come on. Because the other thing that gets activated when you activate your brake switch is your brake lights. If your brake switch is working and the solenoid still isn't working, then it, then it prob the solenoid over lock override isn't working, then it is the solenoid. Just go to a wrecker and buy this whole thing and change this whole thing. It's quite easy to get out. There's four mounting bolts down the bottom, there's two plugs, and then you've got the gear selector cable, okay? Not at all hard to change the whole thing. So I'd suggest that, that you do that. Now, the other thing is some cars don't have a shift lock override. I don't have every car in the world. So if you can comment below that I've got this car and I can't find it, I'll put a link down in the description to what the situation with that car is. I've already had two people write to me. One had a 2016 Volkswagen Jetta, and we found in that case, there's nothing external that show th that you can click. You actually have to um, uh, clip out the shift surround, and only underneath that can you get to the button. That was in a 2016 Volkswagen Jetta. 
The other was the Toyota Prius. The Toyota Prius has no shift lock override, does not exist. They are an electric only car. And the only way to get them out of park when they're stuck in park with a flat battery is to charge the battery. That's just the way Toyota have done it with the Prius. So I hope this helps you understand the shift lock override. I hope um, it's got you closer to a solution with your problem. And if it has, please comment down below. Tell me what you did and how you solved it, or if you didn't solve it. Tell me what country you're from, and remember to be kind to one another. Thanks a lot from Paul in Perth. See you later.